All right. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Patriotic Dragon Radio Program this beautiful Saturday morning in Pickens, Georgia. Patriotic Dragon Radio is heard on WYYZ, 1490 AM, and our ever-expanding 102.7 FM, your hometown radio here in Jasper, Georgia. As always, the opinions, comments are those of the guest and not necessarily those of WYYZ, Patriotic Dragon Radio, or our sponsor. Our sponsor this month is Carrington Coffee Company, located at 675 Noah Drive, next to H&R Block and Fire Breather Fitness. Come by for the best in flavored coffees, smoothies, or my favorite, the Tsunami. First, I want to offer my prayers and thoughts to go out to the women and men of our armed forces across the globe, protecting our freedoms here and abroad, and all of our first responders here in Pickens and across the USA. We're pleased to have on with us this week Meg Norris with Opt Out Georgia. Thank you for being on with us. Thanks. Thanks. It's uh, great to be back. I appreciate the, uh, the invite. All right. And today's topic is an important one as it pertains to our children and their educational future and what I consider government overreach. Uh, before we get started into it, Meg, if you, it's great to have you back on with us. Uh, please give the listeners who have not met you a bit of information about yourself and how you came to live in Pickens County. I have lived in this beautiful area for 15 years. I grew up in uh, East Cobb, uh, moved up here after my parents retired up here and never wanted to leave. So uh, here I sit, raised my son here. He just graduated from um, uh, from high school, and uh, so we're we're learning how to be empty nesters, and I can't think of a more beautiful place to do it. I am a uh, certified Georgia teacher, left the classroom a little over four years ago to uh, fight some of the reforms that were happening uh, in our schools uh, that I did not see were working, uh, and I have continued to do that uh, for the for the last four years, although I have gone back into the classroom uh, uh, in private schools. Okay. Well, that's great. And uh, I know when we had you on last year, it was before and during the the, the, uh, the legislative season and yes. and you were fighting down at the Gold Dome tooth and nail to to get uh, improvements made to uh, very antiquated and uh, behind behind the times kind of legislation so and we, we, we were successful on some levels and and not successful in others well, um, all of our bills did get passed although uh, several of them got vetoed so uh, we're gearing up to do it again this year it's a it's a game of increments absolutely and and i know some of the things that we've seen and i'll let you expand some on it some of the states that implemented some of the things that you've been fighting against have now just in the last six months have state by state after they've had a little bit of taste of it they're walking away Turning from around. it around yes and that, they are and that, yes and they that's are good. so uh, that's good evidentiary evidence of what we can avoid and avoid spending millions of dollars to do something that's not good for our children. So, but uh, uh, tell, tell the listeners what made you get interested in, in the topic and especially the issue of, of the, uh, the legislative structure. I know that was a, a challenge and very demanding. Well, we, um, we got into writing legislation last year because we were told things were going to happen. Uh, we produced a lot of evidence. We uh, met with a lot of legislators. We met with the State Board of Education, and they promised a lot of changes that never happened. So we said, well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So we decided that we would go ahead and write some legislation, which we did. We found um, huge support in Senator Ligon out of Brunswick, who uh, supported what we were doing. The three of us sat down. We wrote these bills together. Uh, and uh, they, were very, they were a surprise to many of Many under the gold dome, uh, which was good because we caught some people off guard. Uh, and um, they were hugely supportive. And we had great support from uh, people like Senator Gooch, who you know, saw, uh, saw the benefit in protecting the kids from uh, a lot of the damage that we were already seeing from some of these reforms that were happening in our school systems. So uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. We were hugely successful for a mom, a teacher, <laughs> and a senator, which was basically where we started. Um, and it, it was also a great feeling to know that, you know, a mom and a teacher could sit down with uh, a, a state senator and say, look, this is what's happening. This is what we want to do. This is how we want to change it. And for him to see value in that 
and uh, put his name on it and help champion it all the way through the legislature. So we, we were very appreciative to Senator Ligon, and uh, we've got others now who are on board who want to help us this, this year. Um, uh, Joyce Chandler from uh, Gwinnett County has been hugely supportive for us, and so we're, we're working with her even more closely this year. So it's gonna, we've got even more bills that we want to bring through, and we're really excited about what's going to happen in this upcoming session. Right. And, and just some, something there that really gives me a, a, a lot of hope is the fact that you prove that concerned citizens without a lobbyist group Absolutely. and big bucks can actually make legislation work, put it to the floor and get out there and, and m make your case to the other legislators and the public and get that support. So well, I, yeah, I think we were, we were, we were successful on, on many levels, but we were successful because we were standing up for kids, and we were doing what was right for students. Uh, and it was an election year. Let's, I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to vote against the kids during an election year. Uh, this upcoming session is going to be very difficult. We're not going to have the pull of, ele of upcoming elections like we had last uh, last session. But I think that um, as more and more parents are seeing the results. Um, a lot of the negative results actually from what's happening in our schools they're getting louder so I, I hope to see some changes in November and I hope to see some huge changes in the next upcoming session right great and, and kind of along that same line what you had fought against and got the bills passed last year uh, as we talked about before we went on the air now there are states that had adopted these rules over the past four to seven years some of the first ones they've done Somewhat like Canada did with uh, with uh, with their medical program, it took them a few years, but when they finally saw the writing on the wall, they decided to rewrite and get out of it. And can you expand and talk a little bit about the states that have seen the light of their? Well, a lot of what a lot of states have actually done is is take what wasn't working and try to improve it. Uh, there has been so much money spent now on testing on uh, new textbooks, new curriculums that all align with Common Core. Um, and I know that that <laughs> seems like it's become kind of a dirty word, um, but it is, it is detrimental really to, to our kids. And it has so many tentacles to it that um, there's been a lot of states who have seen it just, it doesn't work. Uh, their test scores have not improved. As a matter of fact, they've gone down. Um, so there's been a lot of changes on the, on the national level. Um, ESSA came out and the new regulations with it uh, have really tried to um, uh, double down um, on a lot of what's happening in different states. And so we're hoping that uh, those who are overseeing the regulations to that federal level legislation will, will back off of it and, and see that what we really need to do is return the classroom to our teachers. Right, and that, I know from talking to uh, another radio friend of mine in Louisiana that dealt with that whole case down there, those test scores were in the areas that they promised were going to make the most dramatic difference, which obviously weren't in the private schools or in the parochial schools, but in those inner city schools. And, and even they found even in the rural schools, when they went to the, the newer format, they had they had not made any provisions to support those students through that dramatic change, and their parents were even less able because yeah. of the community to, to, to go to a local church or to the library and find other parents who could help struggle through that transition. So a lot of the rural schools in Louisiana were hurt as bad, if not worse, than the, the inner city schools. Well, and, you know, it's funny. I sit around and I watch, even even here in Georgia, we're seeing schools having to hold parent universities in order to bring the parents in so that the parents can understand their second graders' math <laughs> enough to help them at home, which to me is absolutely ridiculous and a waste of money and a waste of time. And uh, the amount of money that has been wasted already uh, is obscene. If that money had gone back into funding education the way it should have been, um, I, I think we actually could have seen some, some pretty significant improvements. Uh, but if we continue down this road, we're going to be in big trouble. Well, and, and talking about the money that's been, that has been spent, it brings back around to the, the fact of how much money over the past 
10 years have been pulled back. And I know here in Pickens County, you know, we had to wind up doing an East Blast yep. where we're t- taking that 1% in order to, to, to do things at the school where the state had pulled away. Can you can expand a little bit on the, the money that's been well, pulled I- out? It's important to note that that Governor Deal has never fully funded the schools, never. Um, so what the problems what we're seeing right now is not only have the schools had to um, change over curriculums, not only have they had to step back and retrain a lot of teachers, but they've had to add technology at such a level that it is it's it's really cost prohibitive to to, to put this technology into the schools because it costs so much to maintain it, it costs so much to keep it updated, keep it working, keep it connected um and you know most of the schools that are in in pickens county and and most of north georgia have been retrofitted with (laughs) with technology and so it's been put together kind of piecemeal um and now the the state is coming down and saying well you have to test these kids um on on the computer um even though research has very clearly shown that testing a child um, on a on a computer screen reduces their reading comprehension. Um, even more te- even more research has come out recently, um, even on these particular tests that have said the kids that take the pe- the paper and pencil versions of the test are scoring up to ten percent more, or some ten percent higher, sometimes even more than that, um, just because it's a paper and pencil test. We're teaching these kids how to annotate, how to um, how to do what they call closed reading. We're, we're teaching these kids how to actively read, and then we're testing them on it on a screen where they, they can't do all of the methods that we've taught them in a classroom. It's, just, it's very frustrating, and um, we know that it, it affects their test taking, um, but yet we continue to push all of this expensive, expensive technology. Um, you know, 90 percent. I saw a, 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 a study done that said that 90 percent of the, um, the the computer applications that are put on these tablets and these laptops that are being put in the schools and called educational are in no way have no benef- no educational benefit to them whatsoever. So, what are we what are we really spending our money on here? Um, and is there a better way to do it? And I absolutely think that there is. Well, and I know this this past year that was a, one of my first kind of issues with our our existing school board was the acquisition of over two hundred thousand dollars in laptop computers that were out of date. Their software and the operating system was out of date the day they purchased them. Absolutely. And when you have companies like Dell that will work with states, which I was part of the their transition in the state of Tennessee and saw that tremendous support that Dell gave all of the Tennessee schools as they went into that race for the top and and took that uh, competition over all the other 50 states. And you see that level of support and you see the, the operating systems that do work. And, uh, you know, I know that Tennessee from day one has not been a common core state. They've, you know, yeah. Well, I know they are. I know they are now. But the, the and even it was interesting because, yeah, there are a lot of people fought it, and that was something and stuff as as we were working with with Dale, Dale. Even though they were providing the computers, they were not in support of it at that point either. But the state legislature was going for the federal dollars, and the federal dollars. Yeah. Don't we love the federal dollars? Yeah. And and to kind of talk about that a little bit with. What we have now with is on the ballot, November 8th, and what we really want to talk in depth about today is Amendment 1. Amendment 1, it is the um, amendment that will give the, uh, give the governor, um, the state, the right to take control of any failing schools in our state. Um, we have already, the, the governor has already identified 100 schools that he wants to take over, um, and it is... It is not only dangerous, but um, it has been proven a complete failure eight times over already. And uh, this is not a program that works. Uh, and this is not a program that is going to improve our schools in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and I find that interesting as, as a lot of legislation is and how it's written up that the, the name, opportunity, when you get into it and you start reading it, it's so vague. And the, the way that it's stated, when you drill down into it and you see what it says, is you can forget any local control 
Uh, you know, you're going to have a 1-800 number to call for your to ask about your child's issues. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, these so are, these are this is an opportunity for him him to bring in private companies, and these private charter companies, um, many of them, uh, the same ones that destroyed uh, New Orleans education, um, will come in and they will not use certified teachers. They will come in. They will get rid of any program about making money um, our children are really nothing but collateral damage at this point and these these companies come in they get rid of your arts programs they get rid of your gymnasiums they get rid of your sports they get rid of your you know everything that that uh, doesn't uh, directly tie to a test score uh, gets uh, gets pushed aside and uh, they they have proven over and over again to fail not only in New Orleans but Mississippi and Chicago and where else uh, Oklahoma um, uh, Philadelphia, a number of, of cities have all tried this, and it just it doesn't work, and it's not the way to go. And um, yes, we need change. Yes, we need help with some of these low-performing schools. Um, but we have a program in place if the governor would just give the state superintendent the money and the power to take care of it. Um, but he has slowly, over the last eight years, seven years, usurped that power put it in his own office, called it the Governor's Office of Student Achievement, and even last legislative, se- last legislative session went so far as to try and make it a nonprofit so that he could run it after he leaves office. So uh, this, it just, I mean, the, the, um, the, the ego behind it, the money behind it is, is obscene. Um, the, the ballot, uh, the language on the ballot is so incredibly misleading um, that I think that... Um, uh, listeners need to hear this because it, I mean, you'd be crazy to vote no uh, if you didn't know any better. And it's meant to mislead. It is It is designed specifically to get people to vote yes. Right. And yeah, just just to go through that, uh, the, the Opportunity School District, how it's written and sh- is going to be shown on your ballot. The preamble is to provides greater flexibility and state accountability to fix failing schools through increasing community involvement well that's about as much of a a a, a backward statement because the state is already accountable to fix the failing schools that are that are under its charge now by analyzing what they need and providing those needs for them and the this amendment will actually decrease any and all community involvement from parents parent teachers associations the local teachers who are in the system in that failing school who may be doing the best job they can. and But the way they've written the ballot question is, shall the Constitution of Georgia be amended to allow the state to intervene in chronically failing public schools in order to improve student performance? Well, it, like I say, it, it sounds really good. As it reads, it sounds terrific. Yeah. We do not want it. Yep. Absolutely want people to vote no. Yeah. And the summary of it, you know, this, this proposal is going to authorize the General Assembly to provide for the creation of an opportunity school district and authorize the state to assume the supervision, management, and operations of those failing public elementary and secondary schools, including, now this is important, the power to receive, control, and expend appropriate funds for such purposes. It will amend Articles 8, Section 5 of the Georgia Constitution by adding the, the new paragraph to Article 7. You know, the copy of this entire proposed amendment is on file in the Office of the Judge of the Probate and available to for public inspection. I'll also have it posted on the Patriotic Dragon website. And then uh, I'd, I'd like for you to give your website out for people so that they can go to it. We are on Facebook under uh, Opt Out Georgia. Uh, but there's also a number of We have um, been able to create a, a huge coalition of organizations throughout the state. Uh, Public, Edu- Public Ed Matters Georgia is a great uh, website um, that has some information about the OSD. Um, uh, the Georgia, um, Georgia Association of Ed- Educators has a great toolkit for anybody who wants to pass out flyers or put flyers in their neighbor's mailboxes to... Neighbor's mailbox. <laughs> we don't want, want to put it in the mailbox. Okay, sorry. Tape it to the outside. Yeah, I tape apologize. It to the outside. No, yeah. It's illegal. Sorry. Yeah, we always make sure we do that. So an important, important thing is to drill down into this and talk to your neighbors. 
uh, whether they have children in school, whether they have grandchildren in school, or whether they don't have any children at all, and, and make sure that people know voting no on this amendment just might be our last opportunity to save Georgia's public schools. And what I found as I d drill down into it is that it'll give the, gover the, the governor himself the autonomy. He gets to pick the superintendent. He gets to pick the management team slash outside company if he chooses. Absolutely. With no input at all from the from the superintendent that we already voted for to run our school system. He has systematically removed pretty much every bit of power that Richard Woods has. Richard is an amazing man and has done a great job considering his hands have been literally tied mostly to his feet because they haven't let him really go anywhere or do anything. Um, this is a political power grab. And the money that is involved in this is is overwhelming. Um, the, the the taxpayers need to know that the funding uh, the funding piece of this is so incredibly murky that we are anticipating a huge huge increase in taxes that are, that are going to be necessary in order to run these. And you know most of these schools are um, are in low income areas right as of right now. Um, and so that money's going to have to come from somewhere. And I can promise you um, that the OSD has the power to take funding from, uh, take QBE money, and, and it's actually in the, uh, in the law itself, take QBE money from other districts and turn it over to the OSD and let them uh, manage that money as they see fit. So it's, 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 it's a really dangerous power grab on a lot of levels. Right, and for those citizens here in Pickens County that have been in with the budget meetings that we had at the, the county level and you heard us being referred to as a Tier 4 county, what that means is for the people who have maintained their homes and have good property values, whether it's Bent Tree, Big Canoe, or the west end of the county with your family land and farms, because of us being a Tier 4 county, our tax money is already being allocated and redistributed through the state to counties like Gwinnett or DeKalb that already have those failing schools because they've done such a poor job of managing it. And this in turn is gonna do nothing but increase that tax burden that we will pay in our county with good school systems and people who are working hard for them. And that money will leave our county, therefore leaving our students. And, and we'll have to make it up locally. So for all of you that were concerned about school tax and it being s almost 70 cents of every dollar of property tax you pay, this is another reason to vote no on Amendment 1 on November 8th. If you're voting early, make sure and, uh, and get out there and talk to your neighbors about this as well. So, As of today, we have 33 districts that are, have come out with uh, uh, resolutions or, or votes um, saying no to the Opportunity School District. So uh, included in those districts are Cherokee, Forsyth, Dawson, Lumpkin, and even uh, Cartersville City. And I am hoping, um, I, am, I am begging, I am <laughs> encouraging everyone to call the Pickens School Board and uh, get them to add their voice, um, get them to vote no, get a, put out a resolution, um, uh, with uh, a, a no vote uh, on the OSD. Um, the, the, the louder these get, um, the more panicked the governor seems to be. Um, he uh, thought this would go through without any, uh, any brouhaha, and uh, he's finding otherwise. He is finding that there are large groups of people um, banning together on, on, on both sides of the aisle to get rid of this. This, is, this has to stop. Once this amendment is put, we can't get rid of it. And right. it's just, it's not, worth, it's not worth even risking. Right, and just to kind of give citizens a heads up as you're listening to the show on Saturday, next Thursday, our Board of Education has a call meeting. So uh, go on the, the BOE website. See what time that meeting starts there in, in downtown Jasper at the Board of Education building. Be a perfect time to uh, stop in. Uh, I'm sure they won't let you get on the public information to ask them to do a resolution to vote against it uh, and get it out there in October. So we've got time before their next October meeting. Uh, the okay. Georgia PTA has also come out against it. So 
Um, yeah, I think the only people that I've seen come out for it, which I was kind of surprised, but not so much as I once I read through the whole article, AG, AJC presented it as the Georgia Board of Education Superintendent's Office and employees had had were sponsoring it. Well, yes, it's state. the school board who yeah. are all appointed by deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And once I read down there, yeah. I went, "Wow, I don't see any names here that are any uh, already buddy buddies with the governor." Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I, yeah, Richard, Richard will, Richard may not publicly ever come out and say he's against it just because of his position, but um, I can tell you that he in fact is. Well, and we know from having Richard here when he was running for state school superintendent that he was adamantly against Common Core. He, he, had, he had seen everything that was wrong with it and what it was going to do to us. So we know how he feels about that, and I'm sure that, that the evidence has not proven it to be any different than what he knew when he went in office. Well, and this, this amendment really is the end game for Common Core. I mean, Common Core was the beginning to try and privatize our public education system. And that is what Amendment starts. Amendment 1 will start to do. The scary thing is, is if you look at what was done in New Orleans, once they took over the first group of schools, they then turned around and they said, any school that does not meet the state average, we are now going to call a failing school. And we're going to go ahead and take that over as well. The, 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 the wording uh, in, in the actual bill um, allows for um, the definition of a failing school to be very fluid. So uh, it's very likely that that 100 schools could grow significantly very quickly. Right, I think because the way they have the legislation, the high points of the legislation said they've already identified, I think, like 127 schools. Mm -hmm. But they're only going to take over 20 per year unless they see the, 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 uh, the grading curve, let's say, is not showing the way they want it to. So, yeah, they're leaving themselves open for however they want to adjust it. And uh, I've heard estimates somewhere in that billion-dollar range, which, of course, is about how much the governor should have been putting in to the education to the public public school for, system for, absolutely for the last eight years so absolutely you know, he'll take that billion that he was should have been putting in for the last seven years and he'll just move it where he wants it to be oh, well, his own pocket in a lot of cases I'm I'm certain that there's a lot of kickback coming back so um, it's going to be uh, interesting to watch and and I hope that that everybody will get out there and vote no yeah absolutely all right well I want to thank you for being on with us and uh, just for how can a citizen get involved on this issue at, at the general assembly level i mean i've already spoken to just today as a our, because rick jasper our state representative was on his way over to uh mississippi for the mall game and stuff to go see georgia uh, georgia try and beat the uh, mississippi rebels but uh he and i have talked about it but how can other citizens get involved and how do you recommend they reach out to the general assembly you know it as a as a as a general citizen coming coming into um, the general assembly, it's is it seems overwhelming sometimes. Um, but I'll tell you that that your representatives really do listen. They really do get those messages. They do get those emails. Um, so I would make make your voice heard. Get out there, and if there's something you want to change, sit down with them and see how how best to handle that. Um, Amendment one obviously will be decided before the next assembly uh, convenes. So hopefully, um, in January when the next session opens, we will not have an amendment one uh, added to uh, to our constitution. But uh, in the meantime, you know, it, it, there's there's so many groups out there that you can get um, flyers and bumper stickers and pins and they're, they're more than willing to, to ship them to you. So, you know, get on your get on your computers and look for some of these groups and get out to the, some of the fairs. Get out, go pass them out at the the Marble Festival. There's so many different things going on in the fall that um, we've got 44 days. And if, and if you if you convince one person every 44 day or every every day for 44 days and get them to convince one person. What was it? What, there was, what was that horrible? There was a horrible com commercial about that. They tell two friends or something. If we can con continue to do that, um, and and just as simple, vote no on Amendment One. Um, I, you know, I think that we really can defeat this, even though it has been stacked against us <laughs> in, in so many ways. Um, you know, and it's it's important to remember too that um, there's already a, a mechanism in place to do this. 
Um, this is really nothing more than more money being taken away from uh, the, the people who need to be truly educating our kids. Right. Yeah. Keeping that money local, keeping control and everything local is, is, is the key, whether it's federal government, whether it's state government, or even whether it's local. Uh, as we saw in our, our budget meetings here in Pickens County, we had three public meetings on the millage rate increase, and it was basically standing room only at all three of those events, which I was very proud of the local citizens. They were there for different different reasons and different concerns, but showing up is key. And I always hear, well, I don't have time. I'm, I work for a living. I don't have time to go down to Atlanta. Well, I can tell you this, whether it's uh, Senator Gooch, uh, Charlie Bethel, Rick Jaspers, any of those guys, any of those representatives, you call them your state senator, they'll meet you at Bojangles and have a cup of coffee with you. Yes, they will. Yeah, and so it's don't use, can't go to Atlanta as an excuse not to have the conversation and make your voice and your concerns heard with those legislators. Okay. Well, Meg, thank you for being on with us. Thank you. And, and, and keeping us all updated on this important issue facing our children. I appreciate your time. All right. I've got some, uh, some announcements uh, I'd like to go through. Uh, the Pickens County GOP will be offering and awarding another scholarship for graduating seniors from here in Pickens County. Uh, I want you to go to, our, to their website, Pickens County uh, Republican Party, or the Facebook page for upcoming de details. Something we've done this year that I'm really proud of for them is that they opened it up to not just Pickens High School graduating seniors, but any senior who's graduating who's a Pickens County resident where they go to homeschool where they go to private school where they go to a Christian Academy in another another county if they're a resident of Pickens County they're eligible to do the essay and be in the competition and along that same topic this year will be the will be the Constitution and these very documents will be covered in a series of constitutional presentation starting in January 2017. So you want to check the GOP Facebook for those details. Uh, Julie Clusty, one of the members of the Pickens GOP and a published author, will be heading up those constitutional presentations. And for those parents who have homeschool children, if you look at it, this can constitute and work as part of their credits for their constitutional and uh, uh, requirements for school. Uh, as it stands right now, it looks like we'll be doing those at Chattahoochee Technical College here in Jasper. They are going to give us a room because it is going to be something that homeschool and private school and public is all invited. And, of course, we want the parents to come out, too, to learn because uh, all of us need to know better our constitutional rights and how we can use those to better this country. Uh, again, I want to thank... Thank all those who came out and voted for your choice in Pickens County. Uh, now just remember, the focus must continue on our elected officials. They need your support, and they do the work for you. So let them know how they're doing on your behalf. Uh, don't, be, don't shy away from going out there when you read something in the paper or you hear something. If you want to know about it, contact your, your local, whether it's a city officer or county officer, to find out what the what their stand on it is okay uh, we've got some upcoming shows also want to touch base on in october we're going to be at quick burger the whole month of october but october 1st we'll be live at the georgia marvel festival come by and see us on main street before the parade and let us know what you think about jasper and pickens county set so october 8th we'll be doing a show with a young millennials group with uh, Jake Fields here locally, Katie Cagle, and Stephen Aarons. And then our October 15th, 22nd, and 29th, those will be candidates running for city council in Jasper and Nelson. Uh, all those shows later in the month will be at the Quick Burger on Highway 5 South. Check my Facebook for times and come out to meet and greet those candidates running for local office. I want you all to all have a wonderful Saturday. Talk to you soon on the Patriotic Dragon radio program. Thanks again for our sponsor this month, Carrington Coffee Company. Come out to enjoy a coffee, smoothie, iced or hot at your hometown coffee shop. 
You can reach Brooke and her team at 770-289-4313 to pre-order your drinks. Have a great Saturday. Thank you.